September 7th, 2023, and as always, we are going over AI papers that came out today that I want to just run through the summaries of. A bit of an announcement change today, though. Uh, the newsletter is now getting much more um, uh, it's get prettied up. We're going to professionalize things, basically. Um, I know I said at the beginning of this channel that I'm going to just do what is convenient for me and helps me study, but um, I'm recognizing that maybe I have some potential to make actual stuff for YouTube and content creation and whatnot, so I'm going to pretty things up and make it look all nice and neat, basically. Uh, but yeah, let's get to it. Unveiling the frontiers of deep learning, innovations shaping diverse domains. So we're gonna explore the applications of deep learning across various fields agriculture, transportation, biomedicine, disaster management, drug design, ecology, etc. To the authors are highlighting advancements and benefits of deep learning in these domains as well as the challenges associated with its implementation, core assertion, revolutionized data analysis and prediction in diverse fields. The implications are far reaching. All right, this is definitely for an intro to convince someone the field is important or cool or whatever. Um, how long is this? I'm curious to just, might be fun to run through, not gonna lie. Um, yeah, it might be a fun paper to run through. I just like to, Maybe we'll find something I'm not aware of, um, some innovations in some fields or something. I like to be a little, I like to keep a broad understanding of what's going on in different places and, oh, it's long. Yeah, it's long. I'm going to save this as a potential thing to cite, but not as an actual, uh, not as an actual thing to read, I think. I just don't have time. Can't be throwing it out willy nilly like that. Theoretical explanation of activation sparsity through flat minima and adversarial robustness. Sorry, I'm also a little, a little sniffly today. I'd be. Okay, we're theoretical explanation of the phenomenon of activation sparsity which refers to the observation that only a small portion of neurons are activated during the inference process, leading to potential cost reduction in both training and inference. But you can't know which ones are going to be activated ahead of time because it's computational. Um, it's, it's computational irreducibility. So this makes no sense. What are we talking about? What's the goal here? Core assertion is that activation sparsity emerges as a result of the network's bias towards flat minima and implicit adversarial robustness. The authors propose the notion of gradient sparsity as the source of activation sparsity and provide a theoretical explanation based on the concept. Gradient sparsity as a source of activation sparsity, that kind of makes sense, like only some small portion of the total gradient is actually doing anything at any one point, um, and therefore it's causing some small, well, not even, because you still end up with the whole thing unless you really force sparsity. I want to see what's happening here. Mechanically, the explanation involves analyzing the gradients of the network's weight matrices and biases. Authors show that flat minima, which are favored by the training process, lead to implicit adversarial robustness. This robustness is achieved through gradient sparsity, where only a small number of gradients contribute significantly to the updates of the weight matrices. Also, there's a concept of effective gradient sparsity, which takes into account the impact of the biases on the gradients. Where is this out of? China. Theorems and empirical experiments that support the theoretical explanation prove gradient sparsity and effective gradient sparsity can lead to implicit adversarial robustness provide insights into emergence and maintenance of spectral concentration and weight matrices. They also propose architectural modifications that can further improve activation sparsity. I, this is not super clear to me as to why it should be. Oh, 
I'm kind of tempted to add it to read. Maybe like skim through it to do a quick video. I don't know. I'm not sure what's happening here. I want it. I don't see the what's super crazy about it, but I'm adding too many papers. I've all the. I also just did an actual big clean sweep of all my papers. I'm never gonna read basically, so I'm back down to a smaller number again, which is nice. But I'm gonna add it to read. Probably start skimming and then throw it away like two pages in. I would guess, but we'll see. Maybe get a video on it. Big one of the day, I think, probably. This is, I think it's a meta paper. I see one meta email address. Maybe not. Um, I think there's, an, there's one right here. Uh, what do we have going on here? Scaling autoregressive multimodal models, pre-training, and instruction tuning. Introduces CM3 Leon, a retrieval augmented token based decoder only multimodal language model capable of generating and infilling both text and images. Infilling, so like BERT, like filling in um, Mad Lib style blank areas in the middle. Training using a two stage process pre training and supervised fine tuning. In the pre training stage, uh, trained on a large scale data set of licensed images and text from Shutterstock. Model uses retrieval augmentation where the relevant and diverse multimodal documents are retrieved from a memory bank to provide additional context during training. Objective function is based on decoder only transformer. See the art performance in text to image generation surpassing other models in terms of some kind of distance metric, some kind of metric, some kind of measure. Um, 7 billion parameters, the largest model, which I guess makes a state of the art. It's crazy. I don't know if it's state of the art per model parameter size or actual state of the art. Okay, yeah, so while using significantly less training data and compute compared to other models, this highlights the effectiveness of retrieval augmented decoder only models like CM3 Leon. Explores different decoding strategies. Strategies include temperature sampling, top P sampling, classifier, free guidance, and contrastive decoding, whatever those mean. I know temperature well, but I don't know what the rest of them are. In the supervised fine tuning stage, CM3 Leon is fine tuned on various mixed images and text tasks. This fine tuning process enhances the model performance in tasks such as image caption generation visual question answering, text-based editing, and conditional image generation. The results demonstrate the effectiveness of instruction tuning in improving the model's performance across different tasks. Showcases the potential of the token-based autoregressive models in the text-to-image domain. Demonstrates the models can also be efficient and performant while also being capable of generating high-quality images retrieval, augmented, pre-training, and instruction tuning, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, I'm not going to read it, but I think it's a meta paper, so maybe everyone will freak out. These images look pretty cool. Um, are there any more images in here to goggle at? Here we go. Text-guided editing. That's the input. What, she, what would she look like as a bearded man? Put on a pair of sunglasses, she should look 100 years old, apply face paint, this is pretty good, that's pretty good, uh, integrate image to image grounded generation, so that's just an image of a pose, like a body breakdown of joints, businessman in city street, boy running on the grass of a soccer field, young girl running on mountain trail with wild flowers, this is pretty good. Walking on beach at sunset. The image to image translation there is pretty good. Oh, so they can do instruction based question answering. That wasn't great. Pretzel. Describe all the objects in the given image in very 
detail. The street sign is on a metal pole. The sign is blue with white writing. There is a red light on the pole. The sky is bright blue. There are cars parked in the street. There are trees on the side of the street. There are buildings on the side of the street. It's pretty good. Yeah. Maybe this is some crazy good text image model, I'm assuming. Yeah. And 7 billion is so small. That's actually so cool. Actually, 7 billion, yeah, this is a cool paper. Um, not my thing, but uh, I'm sure that'll be making headlines. Rubric specific approach to automated essay scoring with augmentation training. I'm just kind of curious as to when we can replace more jobs. Da, da, da. Previous neural approaches to automated essay scoring do not properly account for rubric items during model training and validation, whereas we do here. Proposes an architecture called response, response prompt AES, which includes a pre trained language model, a response self attention layer, and a response prompt attention layer. Yeah, this would be super useful, I'm assuming teachers I guess to make them not have to do great actually you know imagine how nice of a job teaching would be if you didn't have to do any grading anymore like just that in itself is like solves all the complaints I feel like that's like all their time post working hours spent is I guess grading and lesson planning but even like lesson planning too, like have the AI just self tutor each person like as a teacher you get to really just like interact with kids babysit basically um, and teach when they'd prefer to ask you over asking the computer, which is so nice. Like actually being a teacher sounds so nice in five years, 10 years, I don't know. Norm tweaking, high performance, low bit quantization of large language models. What do we have going on here? Method called norm tweaking for high performance, low bit quantization of LLMs. Observe LLMs are robust against weight distortion and that slight adjustments to the weights of normalization layers can restore accuracy even in extreme low bit quantization. Core objective of norm tweaking is to adjust the parameters of layer norm layers in the gener in the quantized model to take to make its output distribution approach that of the float model. Oh, interesting, because floats I guess mess up the actual layer norm calculation, but they're having a different layer norm now. This norm tweaking method is designed to be a plugin in existing post training quantization methods. So they're literally like, this is a plug and play, train your model, then quantize it, and then adjust to their new norm tweak, this their, their new layer norm version. Uh, calibration data generations. This is like, like pl plug and play stuff is so nice where you don't have to actually train the model with it. Like that um, meta paper a couple days ago with the, uh, plug and play context length generator or increaser um, that's going to be so nice it's so convenient to just like have a way to make a current model improve without actually having to train a new thing from scratch okay consists of three main components calibration data generation channel wise distance constraint and weight adjustment of layer norm layers the calibration data is generated using the LLM model itself which helps activate the neurons and improve model quantization the channel-wise distance constraint is used to align the mean and variance of each channel between the quantized and float models and the weight adjustment of layer norm layers. It's performed using stochastic gradient descent. Okay, so this, you have to train a different thing, basically, but I assume it's less computationally intensive than training a whole new model from scratch at that, um, but whatever. Yeah, cool. Large language models for automated open domain scientific hypothesis discovery. Yes, when can it do the research too? When are we getting rid of all the easiest academic jobs that are just like push out bullshit boring papers? New task called TOMATO, which stands for Automated Open Domain Hypoth Hypothetical Induction. That makes no sense. Which aims to automatically generate valid and novel research hypotheses given only raw web corpora. Authors argue that hypothetical induction is a crucial reasoning type in scientific discovery where scientists propose hypotheses to explain observations. Previous research in this area has limitations such as using manually selected observations and relying on common sense knowledge for ground truth hypotheses. To address these, 
Authors a data set consisting of 50 recent social science papers published in top journals for each paper social science experts collect the main hypothesis, identify background and inspirations, and collect relevant web passages, raw web corpora. Why do the social science experts do that instead of having the LLMs do that? The goal is to develop a system that can generate hypotheses solely based on the raw web corpora. To tackle the tomato task, others propose a multi module framework called Moose, which is based on LLMs, three feedback mechanisms, present feedback, past feedback, and future feedback. These allow modules to refine their hypotheses, hypothesis generation by incorporating feedback from other modules or from future modules. Ah, sorry, a little sick. Evaluate performance using GPT-4 based evaluation and expert evaluation by social science researchers. Most framework outperforms an LLM based baseline and the feedback mechanisms progressively improve the base framework. All right. This is not quite what I hoped thought it would be, but um, whatever. GPT Invest AR, Investor, I guess, Investor, enhancing stock investment strategies through annual report analysis with LLMs. Hey, let's take it a step further. Let's give it straight up Yahoo News, please. Annual reports contain valuable information about a company's financial health that can impact its stock price. LLMs can be used to analyze them. ML models trained on LLM outputs can predict the best performing stocks over the upcoming year. Paper uses GPT 3.5 to generate features by asking specific questions about a company's financial health based on its annual report. LLM outputs in the form of confidence scores are used as features for training a machine learning model. Target values for the ML model are derived from the percentage return of the stock between two successive annual report filings. Uh, outperforms S&P 500 index in selecting stocks with higher returns. Returns are higher for a smaller number of selected stocks, indicating the effectiveness of the ML model in stock selection. Max return strategy based on the highest stock price within a year show significantly superior performance compared to the 12 month return strategy. The use of LLMs can simplify. So I, I love when people publish actual money making things, like they actually re reveal their idea for how to make stock um, decisions. And it's because it's like, if you had a seriously good idea that you knew that you had a reason to believe no one else would think of, like it was sufficiently clever, then you wouldn't tell anyone. You would just keep it to yourself. If you had some new, like, crazy math theory something or other uh, way to predict stocks you don't tell anyone that you just ride off that because the moment everyone else knows it kind of like decreases the value the, the market evens things out um, and removes your possible uh, advantage but with something like this where like they thought to themselves it's inevitable there's a hundred other groups right now like including like random college students trying to do this right now who are trying to actually like just get the code out there first and in that kind of case you just publish the research for sake of saying, hey, um, I got here first, give me a credit, give me a citation kind of thing. Because there's no way to actually uh, beat someone to an idea like this, which is just how the LLMs rank uh, or read, what's it called, 10Ks. Um, I like to have them read Yahoo News constantly. That'd be what I would prefer, but... Uh, da, 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 da. And honestly, do you even need full LLM stuff, or can you just do like a? I bet for like if you because like, I know people do like a reading tweets and reading Yahoo News stuff of just like sentiment analysis, where they just do like a sentiment analysis model, like positive negative kind of thing. But and those themselves work. But I wonder if LLMs would do better on that kind of approach. How how long is it? I said it to a buddy who likes stonks. What's it called? Next. Generative algorithms for fusion of physics-based wildfire spread models with satellite data for initializing, initializing wildfire forecasts. This is another of just for a buddy of mine who works for FEMA. I'm going to send that to him. Next. 
Domain adaptation for efficiently fine-tuning vision transformer with encrypted images. Uh, addresses the problem of degraded model performance when training deep neural nets with encrypted images. Uh, oh, yay! Because um, I know encrypting stuff. So that that's a problem with encrypting stuff. I assume it's because unencrypted images reveal structure in the order of the way the data is presented. But encrypting still technically retains all information, but now kind of like scrambles the structure of the data. So you end up with like um, a system that's, it's harder to get information out of basically. Still doable, still should be doable, I would imagine. Although maybe not though, because what if you use like a hash al algorithm or something, then I mean, maybe it's not doable. Maybe it's not doable. Maybe I just assumed it was doable. I think maybe it might not be, um, but they are hopefully fixing that problem. Propose a domain adaptation method to reduce the influence of image encryption with fine t when fine-tuning models with the vision transformer, a popular architecture for image classification. The core assertion of the paper is that by adapting the embedding structure of vision transformer, the performance degradation of models trained with encrypted images can be minimized. The authors focus on block-wise image encryption, which involves block scrambling and pixel shuffling and its affinity with the embedding structure. Oh, rather than encrypting the entire image, maintain some of the structure, basically. So they're only encrypting block-wise and the separate chunks of the image, like the convolutional net would go through kind of thing. And I guess that's how embedding layers are also set up in images. I didn't know that. I, 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 don't, I had no clue how um, we created image embeddings. But that kind of makes sense. Mechanics of the proposed method involve modifying the position and patch embeddings of the pre-trained VIT model to align with the position scrambling and pixel shuffling performed during image encryption. This adaptation is carried out prior to fine-tuning the model with encrypted images. Authors demonstrate that this domain adaptation method effectively reduces the performance degradation caused by encryption. Results of the experiments fully reduces or effectively reduces partially. I don't know. Results show the proposed method maintains almost the same classification accuracy. Okay, almost the same as models trained with plain images, even when using encrypted images. The classification accuracy is compared with the existing methods for privacy preserving image. So this is also scary too, because like, I mean, I guess if you want to encrypt your stuff, you encrypt the entire image, don't do the block thing, and like you're better off. But the fact that models, I mean, it makes sense that they can, but the fact that models can um, do classification or whatever, uh, even in encrypted images, scares me about a level of encryption because, like, what if we they also get good enough to the point where they can reconstruct images, right? Now, I imagine it'll be some asymptotic approach where, like, uh, in, when instead of constructing my face exactly in a photo of me, it'll construct like a, another generic brunette white guy with glasses. I assume, like, it'll just pull out semantics. I would hope, and maybe not specific features or specific um tiny details. But it's scary that models can do this. It's 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 I guess kind of good, but like, I don't know. I, I don't know if we can't, we need this though, for sake of putting stuff on blockchain. And if we want to like have people, let people have them, um, uh, private data upload to train public models, we're going to need stuff like this, but I don't know. It's just kind of freaky. Implications are significant for privacy preserving deep learning applications. By enabling the use of encrypted images for training models, the proposed method allows for the protection of visual information while maintaining high classification performance. This has implications for applications such as privacy preserving learning, access control, and adversarial defenses. The proposed domain adaptation method can be applied to other models. Does this only, I assume this only works for a specific encryption algorithm used also, which is also an issue. Um, it's important to know, blah, 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 blah. I'm kind of curious as to what's actually happening here, but I know it's way too in-depth for me to read and it'd be worth my time. Six pages, not bad. Um, I'm kind of tempted. I'm kind of tempted. Oh, I can't decide. I can't decide. It's only six pages. I'm going to add it. I'm so indecisive. Domain adaptation.
Deep reinforcement learning from hierarchical weak preference feedback. New framework called Heron, hierarchical preference based weak reinforcement learning. People be just doing whatever the hell they want to with um, acronyms nowadays. For designing reward functions in reinforcement learning tasks, the goal is to learn reward functions that capture the preferences of human experts without relying on explicit numerical weights for each reward factor. Instead, Heron leverages the importance of ranking, the importance ranking of reward factors provided by experts. The core idea of Heron is to compare trajectories based on the given reward factor hierarchy. I don't know what's happening here. I'm sorry, my mind is zoning out. I'm just going to skip by it. I'm, I'm, I'm zoning out and reading that right now. Adaptive consensus, a network pruning approach for decentralized optimization. Uh, okay, authors propose an adaptive, randomized, com communication efficient algorithmic framework for decentralized optimization problems. The main challenge in decentralized, decentralized optimization is the reliance on communication, which can be a bottleneck in many applications. The goal of the proposed framework is to reduce the volume of communication by selectively pruning the edges of the network while still achieving consensus among the nodes. The core idea is to judiciously select a subset of edges at each node for communication based on the relative importance and effectiveness in achieving consensus, introduce a pruning protocol that periodically attracts the disagreement error among along the edges to estimate the relative importance. This information is then used to create a modified graph with only the most influential edges, reducing the communication efforts. Oh, cool. I'm not gonna get into that, but it sounds like it's gonna be useful for all the decentralized blockchain model training future. A survey of imitation learning, algorithms, recent developments, and challenges. That's, I guess, what it sounds like. Comprehensive survey of imitation learning and robotics and AI. IL is a process where an agent learns a desired behavior by imitating an expert's behavior, which is provided through demonstrations. This paper discusses the different approaches to IL, their strengths, limitations, and recent developments. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, is this short enough to read? Thirteen pages. I love me reading a survey. Love me some surveys. Yeah, we'll add it. All right, that is it for today. Um, as always, check out my Substack to read these summaries. It also has a new nice summary summary at the beginning that's uh, more friendly to read. I've cleaned the whole thing up quite a bit. Um, you can find citations that are probably incorrect on there as well as a uh, prereqs knowledge for understanding the concept of a paper if you, in case you want to like not be if you're not sure if you can actually read this yet if you have the um background knowledge uh, in general the channel is hopefully getting more professional over the coming weeks but uh yeah end of video